Praise the Lord. Amen. Isaiah chapter 55. Praise God. Amen. We bow our heads in prayer. Gracious Father, even as we come together today in your house, we pray that you continue to bless your people. Your presence will fill this place. Even as we congregate, Lord, to listen to you, listen to your words. You said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God shall man live. God, even as we open up Holy Scriptures today, God, we pray for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, discernment, and revelation. Pray that the Spirit of God will use the Word of God to touch the hearts of your people. God, you will bring, O oh God, those who are not saved, Lord, bring them to the knowledge of the truth. It is not your will that any should perish, but all should have life, and have life more abundantly. Bless us, O oh God, as we listen to your words today. In Jesus' precious, wonderful name. Amen. All right. Isaiah chapter 55. Start out, said, uh, Ho, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters. And uh, he that had no money, come ye, buy and eat. Ye come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Now, in the book of Genesis chapter 1, the Bible tells us that in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the scripture tells us that the Lord, he created man in his image and his own likeness. And he breathed into the nostril of man the breath of life. And man became a living soul. Uh, when the Lord breathed into the nostril of man, man became a living soul. And uh, according to what the scripture is telling us, God is the creator. He is the one who created man, and he is the one who, um, you know, set man in operation. He created the body of man, and within man's body, God created a vacuum. There was a vacuum that was created in the body of man for God. It can only be filled with God. That space, or that vacuum that was built by God in man's body, was built so that man could fill it with God. And when the Bible is telling us here, ho, everyone that tells it. Now the word ho, it's a way to gain a person's attention. And God is trying to gain our attention. God wants to gain our attention. A lot of times, you know, when God is speaking, people seem to find a lot of things to do. And they find all kinds of other things to involve themselves in. But God is trying to gain our attention. And he said, oh, everyone that thirsted. So it's a universal um, invitation. This invitation is universal. Now, some people will say, well, God is speaking here to Israel. Yes, he's speaking to Israel, but it's not just to Israel alone. Uh, he's speaking to. He's speaking to all the universe, every creation, all of God's creature. Every human person that was created by God, God is speaking to them here, and He's giving them an invitation. Everyone that thirsted, thirsted for what? Now, uh, it is said that the body is made up of 60% uh, water, and without water, a person cannot survive for a long time. And if you need water, it doesn't matter how much food you have available, uh, you're still not going to be satisfied. When you need water, uh, there's a dryness within your throat, within your mouth, that needs to be sustained. And that dryness needs water. So water is very important. But the water that we are talking about here, it is not physical water. It is spiritual water. It is water to um, quench the soul. And uh, the scripture is telling us here that every person is in need of this water. This water is a reference to salvation. You remember when Jesus, when he met the woman at the well, and uh, the woman asked him for water to drink, and Jesus said, he that drinketh of this water shall thirst again, but he that drinketh of the water I shall give unto him shall never thirst. 
And the water shall be in him a well of water springing up unto everlasting life. And uh, the Bible tells us that when the, the woman sees the need, when she sees the need for this water, when she sees the need for this vacuum of God in her life to be filled, she said, Lord, give us this water evermore. Glory be to God. The Bible tells us when she received that water, she dropped her water pot. The physical water that she went to the well to draw, she dropped the water pot because she was filled up with that living water. You know, remember when Jesus was at the feast, that last day of the feast, when everybody was filled up with all of the drinks that was available, at the end of the feast, Jesus, he stood and he said, If any man thirsty, let him come unto me and drink. For out of his belly, hallelujah, he that believeth in me, hallelujah, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. And this is the water that God is offering to us here in the book of Isaiah. Everyone that thirsteth. We are in the Christmas season and this is the time of giving, sharing, and everybody is looking for a, a Christmas present, a Christmas gift. And here we see the God of the universe, the creator of the universe, the creator of man. He is extending an invitation and he wants to give a gift to every person. And that, that gift that he wants to give to us today is that living water that will quench the soul. Quench the soul. You know, uh, it doesn't matter what we accumulate in life today. That thirst that we have within our soul, it cannot be sustained with material things. It doesn't matter how much money we um, accumulate. Money or material things cannot quench that spiritual thirst that we have within us. The only thing that can quench that spiritual thirst, satisfy our soul, is the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible said if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us away from all unrighteousness. So God, He wants to fill that vacuum, that thirstiness, that dryness that is within our heart. He wants to fill that vacuum. The Bible tells us, Come ye to the waters. So it's a universal invitation and He's calling people to the waters. Hallelujah. I remember when Jesus gave out that invitation uh, in the book of Matthew. Jesus said, Come unto me. All in that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Said, My yoke is easy and my burden is light. Learn of me, for I am meek and lonely in heart, and you shall find rest unto your soul. And this is the same rest that Isaiah was speaking about here. This is the same living water that Jesus was offering to the people in his time. And uh, it said, that, uh, and he that had no money. So this water is priceless. But you can't buy it with money. This water, you know, even though you don't have physical money, it's still available to you. Even though you might not be an uh, educated person, it is still available to you. Even though you might be an outcast in society, it's still available to you. Come ye, buy and eat. Hallelujah. He said, come ye. I think God speaks more or less like us. Amen. <laughs> I think God is one of us. Praise God. Hallelujah. Come ye. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Come ye, buy and eat. Yeah. You know, we say, God say yeah, and <laughs> we say yo. <laughs> come ye. Uh, come ye, hallelujah, come buy wine and milk without money and without price. So why, why is he saying here to come and buy and then he's telling us that it is free? The reason why he's telling us here to come and buy because salvation, it is the most valuable thing. You can't put any price on salvation. Salvation was purchased by the blood of of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And we cannot pay um, for salvation. 
Because the Bible said we have not been redeemed with corruptible things of silver and gold, but we have been redeemed by the precious blood of Jesus. But when we receive Christ as our Lord and Savior, we have to make that ultimate commitment. And that commitment that we make to God, it means that we give Him our all. You give Him your soul. You give Him your heart. Everything, every part of your being has been given to God. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Come and buy wine and milk. The wine and milk there is spiritual wine and milk. Spiritual wine and milk to satisfy, to quench the thirst. Without money and without price. So as I said before, this uh, uh, milk and wine that the Lord is offering here, there is no price that you can attach to it. Hallelujah. It is priceless. But God made this priceless gift available to each of us today. And he's given us this universal invitation. And if you look at the text, you will see how many times in the text here, he's telling us to come. He's entreating us to come. He's offering us the gift, but he's telling us to choose it. I remember back in the book of, uh, 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 I think it's Joshua. Um, the word of God said, choose you this day whom you will serve. And God tell us, uh, he put before us life and death. And then he tell us to choose life. And here he's telling us to come. And he keeps telling us to come. I want to say to us today, it is not God's will that any should perish, but all should have life and have life more abundantly. So he keeps saying to come. You know, that's the reason why when we stand before God at the day of judgment, no person will have an excuse. We won't be able to make an excuse and say, well, you know, God, I didn't hear the gospel preached. Because he gave out so many invitations. And there are so many messengers who have been spreading the gospel of salvation and keep saying, come. So when we stand before him, as the Bible said in the book of Revelation, Every man, woman, boy and girl will stand before God. And the Bible said, a book will be opened. And another book. And out of that book, every person will be judged. And the scripture said, whosoever, whosoever name was not found written in the Lamb's book of life shall be cast where? Into the lake of fire. And a lot of times here people say, well, you know, God is so merciful and God is so compassionate and, you know, God will not send anybody to hell. But he, gave, he, have, he has given us here ample time to come to him and to acknowledge that we need him and to acknowledge that that void that we have within our heart, that vacuum that we have within our heart needs to be filled. And when he gives out all of these invitations, if we turn our back on these invitations, our dwelling place for eternity will be in hell. And the Bible said, where the, the worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. The scripture tells us that the, the wicked shall be turned into hell, and all the nations that forget God. To forget God is when we hear his invitation, and we refuse or we neglect to accept his invitation. Praise the Lord. It tells us, wherefore, in verse 2, do you spend money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which satisfieth not? Hearken diligently unto me, and eat ye that which is good, and let your soul delight itself in fatness. So here, the scripture is telling us here, why are you spending your money for that which is not bread? You know, as I said, we're in the Christmas season, and uh, most of, I, I think, well, I hope so. I hope uh, most people here probably already done their Christmas shopping. There are some people who do late shopping. But we go out and we spend money and stuff. And there's nothing wrong in that. But what God is saying here, you're going out and you're spending money on all kinds of stuff. And the stuff that you're spending your money on, it can't satisfy your, your soul. None of the stuff that we bought for this Christmas can satisfy our soul. And why are you spending money? God, not me asking this question. God is asking the question, wherefore do you spend money for that which is not bread? 
What, the material things that we are buying cannot satisfy that thirst. The thirst that is mentioned in verse 1, material things cannot satisfy it. And God is saying that we are putting so much interest into buying these um, physical things which cannot satisfy our, our, our soul. But here he is giving us the invitation to buy that which will satisfy the soul and that the invitation is not being received. So he's asking the question, why are you spending your money for that which uh, is not bread and your labor for that which satisfies not? There are so many people who are seeking for satisfaction and they're looking for different things to satisfy them. Some people think that, you know, if they get more wealth, if they make, when they make their first million, some people think, when, you make, when I make my first million, I'm going to be satisfied. And lo and behold, when you make your first million, you've got to make a second million. And then you say, when you make my second million, I'm going to be satisfied. Some people think that their satisfaction will be in a woman. And you get hooked up with somebody and say, I'll be totally satisfied with this person. And lo and behold, that quench or that void, that vacuum that is in your heart cannot be met by a woman. That vacuum that is in your heart cannot be met by a man. That vacuum that is in your heart cannot be met by material things. And that's the reason why so many people today are so unsatisfied. And they are unsatisfied because that spiritual thirst, that spiritual vacuum that the Lord built within them, it is not being filled with God. So therefore, they keep on going from one thing to another Seeking for satisfaction, and no satisfaction can be had. But praise the Lord. The Bible tells us, hallelujah, you, uh, wherefore, uh, 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 wherefore do you spend money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which satisfies not? Um, hearken, listen, hearken. It means to incline or to listen attentively to what God is saying. Hearken diligently unto me, and eat ye that which is good, and your soul shall delight itself in fatness. So the Lord is saying, listen to me. God is pleading with us today. Hallelujah. Could you imagine the creator of the universe, the all-powerful God, is pleading with his creation, and he's saying, Listen to me diligently, and eat ye that which is good. What he is offering to us today, it is good. In the book of Psalms, it said, O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. God is offering us a good gift here today. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, and cometh down from above, from the Father of life, the Bible tells us. And it's the same Father of life who is offering us this good gift here today. And let your soul delight itself in fatness. Let your soul take pleasure in fatness. Let your soul feast on that which I'm offering to you. In verse 3, he said, incline your ear. God is he's still not giving up. He just tell us to um, hearken unto him. But here he said, um, incline your ear. In other words, let your ear zero in on what I'm saying. And a lot of times the Lord will be speaking, and people, they don't listen. You know, they don't give no attention. And here God is pleading with us, and he's saying, incline your ear and come on to me. You know, when you have time, you can check and see how many times in these three verses of Scripture where the Lord is calling and he's saying to come unto me. Hear, and your soul shall live. Brethren, until we incline our ears and listen to the Lord and receive the plan of salvation that he is offering to us, we are living in debt. The Bible tells us that the person who lives in sin is living in debt. We are not alive until we acknowledge Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Sin kills the soul. And it's only one person who can give life to the soul, and it's the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. 
And when he talk about the show mercies of David here, he's talking about all of the kingdom blessings that the Lord plan, promised to give to David. When a person received Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, all of the kingdom blessings that the Lord promised uh, to David, his uh, children, his sons and daughters, they became, become entitled to that. I'm going to just jump down to um, verse 6 and close up. It said, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Brethren, God can be found now. Today, anybody who call upon him, he will answer them. But the time will come when the door to mercy, the door to salvation will be closed. And, uh, you know, when that time comes, no one will be able to be saved. Hallelujah. It sounds strange. But the Bible said, Seek ye the Lord why he may be found. God can be found now. All we need to do is to acknowledge our sins, confess our sins, call upon the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, you confess your sins to him and you ask the Lord to forgive you and make him Lord of your life. And your name will be immediately written down in the Lamb's book of life. Call ye upon him while he is near. The Lord is near. And when he talk about the Lord being near, he's talking about his coming. The, the coming of the Lord is near. And brethren, when you look at what is taking place in the world today, you look at all of the fulfilled prophecies that we are seeing today. The Bible talks about wars and rumors of wars. Talk about sicknesses and diseases that is in the world today. All of these are the fulfillment of prophecy. And the Bible is telling us when we see these things, we must what? Look up for all redemptions right now. Hallelujah. So you have to seek the Lord. Call upon Him. Hallelujah. Call ye upon Him while He is near. Let the wicked forsake His way. And the unrighteous man is taught. And let him return unto the Lord. And he will have mercy upon him. And to our God. For he will abundantly pardon him. So what he say here? The wicked person. And to be wicked. Doesn't mean that you have to be out there living in fornication. Living in adultery. Doesn't mean that you have to be out there killing people. Doesn't mean that you have to be a member of ISIS. To be wicked. To be wicked is a person who hear the gospel of salvation and they turn their back on the message of salvation. Any person who hear the message of salvation and refuse to acknowledge Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior is considered to be a wicked person. Praise the Lord. Let the wicked forsake his way. So what he's saying here, you have heard the gospel preached so many times and you have neglected or refuse to acknowledge the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you need to forsake your way. And uh, the interpretation of repentance, it is the confession and the forsaking of sin, the turning of one from Satan unto God. We need to turn from our wickedness, turn from our sinful state, and turn to the Lord. Hallelujah. And the unrighteous man, he is taught. So turn from those unrighteous thoughts and let him return. God is pleading and he's saying, return. You see how many times he's calling? First of all, he's saying to come unto me. Now he's saying, return. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And he will have mercy upon him. God is a merciful God. God is a loving God. God is a compassionate God. But his mercies and his love will not last forever. The time will come when the door for, to mercy will be closed. Hallelujah. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. God said he will pardon. He is a God who, whose arms is wide outstretched. And it doesn't matter how far we drift from him. He's waiting to pardon us. I'm going to ask the musicians to come back. We'll sing a song from the song sheet. Hear the blessed Savior calling the oppressed. You're here today. You don't know Christ as your Lord and Savior. I want to give you an invitation to come to know Him, to come to um, give your heart to Him, confess your sins. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah.
receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. This is the, His voice. Harden not your heart. Praise. Call. Oh, the final call will go out. Glory be to God. God is going to use His messengers to make one last call. And when that last call go out, it means that there will be no more. The salvation door, the salvation message is going to be closed. And some people say, well, I don't believe so because there's too many people preaching today. I'm telling you, the time will come and all of the preaching, the good preaching or the godly preaching, the God sent messengers. God is going to say, you have done enough. Come home. Hallelujah. The door will be closed. Glory be to God. And what are you going to do? Hallelujah. The Bible talks about in Revelation. Some people are going to run to the rock. And they're going to say, fall on me. Some people are going to try to kill themselves, but they won't be able to die. Because death is going to flee away from you. Brethren, this is the time. This is the opportune time for us to trust Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. There is no repentance in the grave. Hallelujah. When you die, that's it. Nobody can pray you in. It doesn't matter how much material things you leave behind. Nobody can use material things to make it right for you uh, where God is concerned. God don't have any grandchildren. All he has is sons and daughters of God. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Glory be to God. I see there's uh, some folks at the altar today. Is there anybody here who don't know Christ as Lord and Savior? You're here at the altar. You don't know Christ as your Lord and Savior. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Glory be to God. I'm going to just pray one prayer over all of the rest of the folks as they stand before us today. Glory to God. Let us all lift up our hearts to the Lord. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you for this great privilege that you have given unto us. And even as we listen to your words today, O oh God, Lord, you said to come. And, O oh God, you keep extending the invitation. And you keep saying to come. And, O oh God, you keep saying return. Hallelujah. You keep saying to the backslider, return unto me. Hallelujah. Oh God, all those of your children who are standing before you today, you know the heart, the heart is deceitful. And above all things, most desperately wicked, who can know it? I, the Lord, have sought the heart. God, I pray that you just search the heart of every one of your sons and your daughters today, Lord. God, we confess our sins, our iniquity, our shortcomings, our failures. Oh God, our rebelliousness. Oh, God, we confess them before you today, Lord. Remove our sins and our iniquity as far as the east is from the west. Oh, God, we pray that you cleanse us by the washing of water. Hallelujah, by your words today. Lord, those who might be discouraged, those who might be weak, oh, God, those who might be wandering, oh, God, I pray that you reach forth your tender, loving care hands, oh, God, and touch them, Lord. Oh God, your arm is wide outstretched. Embrace your people today, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh God, pick them up in your arms of love. Wrap them in your arms of love today, Father God. Oh God, I pray that the windows of heaven will be open over the lives of your people, Lord. Oh God, that thirst that you have created, that vacuum that you have built within the heart of man. Lord, even those who did not accept the call today, I pray that the veil will be removed from their eyes and the plugs will be removed from their ears, O oh God, so that, O oh God, they will heed the voice of the Lord. Father, we thank you and we praise you, Lord, and we glorify and lift up your name. God, even as we prepare to participate, O oh God, of the meal that is prepared for us, we pray that God that you bless and sanctify it, O oh God. All those who prepare this meal, Lord, we thank you for them. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that you just cleanse, O oh God, and let this meal, O oh God, that we're about to partake of, be fit, O oh God, for the nourishment of our bodies. Lord, we plead the blood of Jesus Christ over everything that we are preparing to eat today, Lord. 
And we ask that you bless it and sanctify it and use it, O oh God, for the honor and for your glory. In Jesus' precious, wonderful name. Amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Praise Amen. the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Glory to God. The Lord bless us. The Lord bless us. Praise the Lord. Sister Lewis, one special prayer. Um, I think um, for um, your cousin, your cousin passed away. Um, we want to pray especially for her. I'm going to ask the elders to come and let us surround Sister Lewis. Um, she have a lot of, um, a few deaths over the, the last few months. She have a few family members that passed away. And we need to pray uh, for her, pray uh, for all those who are grieving. Uh, Sister Jennifer, um, I think some of you should remember her. She was here a few months ago. She passed away, and we need to remember her and her family uh, in prayer. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Father, we thank you for Sister Lewis. Thank you, O oh God, Lord. O oh God, we place her in your care. Lord, we thank you because life and death, O oh God, is in the power of the tongue. And, oh God, we praise you there, Father God, that you promised that you'll give your beloved sleep. And we praise you there, Father God, that you promised, oh God, Lord, to give us, oh God, a heart that is free from worries. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, the troubled heart today, the troubled heart that Sister Lewis might have today, oh God, in regards to her family members there, Father God. I pray that the peace of God and pass and all understanding shall keep our soul and mind to Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray, O oh God, for your daughter Jennifer who is with you. O oh God, we pray for her family. O oh God, members, her husband and her children. At this time, Lord, remember them, Lord. All of the grieving relatives, Sister Lewis and all of the rest of the family that is grieving the loss, O oh God, of your, your beloved daughter today, I pray that you just embrace them, Lord, and you strengthen them, and you comfort them, O oh God. Lord, those who are in the family who are struggling with sicknesses and diseases, Lord, I pray that you just touch them by your mighty power, Lord. God, those who are not saved, those who don't have a knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray that you open up their eyes, O oh God, and let them know that life is short. Hallelujah. And, oh God, accept we trust you and lean upon you and give our hearts into your hands. We have no hope. Oh God, minister to them by your mighty power today, we pray. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the Son, we ask these favors. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 